Hi, I'm Wesley Brand with Vessen. I recently graduated from Andrew Ludlow's Optical Clocks Lab, where I built the world's most accurate transportable clock. We're here today to talk about a major mistake people make in building atomic physics experiments. The historical way of building an experiment was to use one of two laser stabilization methods, either a wave meter for your first level of stability that works for some repump lasers and some cooling lasers that has about five megahertz of accuracy and precision. And then for anything else, any other transition, you would have to use a cavity built at a specific wavelength to stabilize that laser. Now with the Vescent Rubicomb, there's additional ways to stabilize laser that are very robust with reasonable cost and perfect uptime. We'll talk about the five levels of laser stability. The first is still the old way of using a wave meter. A wave meter is great. It's not that expensive, it's scalable, you can keep adding channels as you need, and it's fairly robust. But it's limited to only a few megahertz of accuracy and stability. The second level of stability is between one kilohertz and a few megahertz where the wave meter leaves off. And that is by using the Vescent Rubicomb with a GPS reference that is stabilized to a rubidium oscillator. This technique is completely robust, it has no free space components, it's all optical fiber and radio frequency components. And at one kilohertz of stability at both long and short times, it's completely capable of laser cooling strontium. Think about how cool that is. You no longer need a cavity to get ultra cold strontium atoms. It's at a reasonable cost. The frequency comb and a GPS transceiver are COX components and they can ship in short times. It's also scalable. You can keep adding laser channels as needed. It's also robust. We test every frequency comb we make on a shock and vibe table and know it can stay phase locked through 20 Gs of shock. Do you like to walk around your lab? Do you like to talk to colleagues? Well, with the old way, a cavity, you could easily cause your laser to unlock due to the acceleration sensitivity. But with a comb, you can stay phase locked for days and continuously take more data. The third way is by using the stable laser by DFM to lock the comb's optical frequency. The stable laser uses a laser locked to an acetylene transition at 1542 to achieve 300 hertz of line width and a half hertz of drift per day. With this level of stability, you can further gray molasses cool strontium or interrogate neutral calcium transitions. It's also quite simple, scalable and robust, just like a GPS transceiver because it's simply a fiber in, a lock signal out. The fourth level of stability is to lock the Vescent Rubicomb to a cavity at a telecom wavelength. There we can leverage decades of work by the telecommunications industry to make excellent lasers, optical components, and mirrors. At this level of subhertz stability, you can interrogate optical clock transitions or implement single qubit gates or even multi-qubit gates depending upon the platform you're using. Cavities in the C-band are much better than cavities at other wavelengths. The coatings are much more accurate with lower defects. If there's defects in the coating, you get higher order TEM modes, which cause interference on the pound driver hall signal. They also become more quantum noise limited, scaling with one over lambda to the four, making it very difficult to build good visible wavelength cavities if there's defects in the mirror. A cavity at the C-band is much more robust and scalable and cost effective than building cavities at individual wavelengths or a multi-wavelength cavity. Nonetheless, it still requires an expert user to both build and maintain. So if you don't need a cavity, then don't do it. Go back up a step and use a stable laser or a GPS reference. The fifth and final level of stability is to build a cavity at each individual wavelength you need to interrogate atomic transitions. However, this is difficult and not scalable. It takes a lot of effort to build and maintain a cavity, and if you have one at each individual wavelength, it becomes cost ineffective and time consuming. If you're a grad student and you're trying to build cavities at multiple wavelengths, do remember, this is merely classical physics. Unless you're on the very cutting edge of cavity science, you're not going to get a paper or advance your career or graduate any sooner for this year of your life that you wasted. There's only one real use case of building 
individual cavities at individual frequencies. And that's where you need low noise at high offset frequencies, where you can use the feedback from the cavity at many megahertz to subtract that noise from your laser. This is the Vessant Rubricomb, your stable frequency reference. We generate the comb light in here and lock the carrier envelope offset and repetition rate or optical frequency. From here, we can port it in to the rubric color, the wavelength extension boxes. This one here is meant for barium ions, such as in a quantum computer. But we could also build one for a strontium or ytterbium lattice clock. Below is the stable laser, the third level of stability for locking the comb. It's capable of locking the comb with 300 hertz of line width across all the comb teeth with a half hertz of drift per day. Why did we name it the rubric comb? We started by thinking about what are the best atomic physics platforms? And of course the answer is rubidium. It's got great wavelengths, it's so easy to laser cool. And the root word of rubidium is rubrum, from Latin for red. Well, what else uses that word? It means a standard of reference, something you can trust and verify. Rubric. Rubricome laser makes the grade.